Welcome to Monday Minutes with Jesse and Kelly. I'm Kelly. And I'm Jesse. And this is a short video where we explore Koha. Today, we're going to be talking to you about default values in MARC frameworks. You know, I think that a lot of libraries appreciate the frameworks that they can um, use a different framework for maybe fast add. So they don't have to go through that whole long MARC record um, and just create a record really fast. And I know that libraries have used also like an ILL framework. But what about just being able to say, every time I make a record using this framework, use some default values. So I don't always have to say it's this item type or it's this shelving location or it's this collection code. So we thought we would do that today. And, and that's perfect. You can even do it in the item level values, which you mentioned, but I mean, that's, that's a big one. We get a lot of questions about that because you want to make it as easy as possible when people are processing those new items that are coming in. So those values are already set. Exactly. And the ILLs, you know, you're doing 20 at a time. So you want to make sure that that's a quick process. Yep. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop over to our MARC framework, which is in the Koha administration. Eventually, there we go. And under the catalog, we have MARC bibliographic framework. Now, my system has a, oh, God bless you. God Thank bless you. you. Thank you. Um, my system has an interlibrary loan framework, so we're going to go ahead and open. God bless you, Jesse. Thank you. Um, an interlibrary loan framework already, so we thought we'd add some default values, both as Jesse said at the mark level and also at the item level, which is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and go to mark structure. So what should we do first, Jesse? Well, um, let's go in and we can use that search for tag up top and let's go in and do our 942 first. So if you can go right directly to the, the mark field and the subfield. So if I'm going to do 942 um, dollar sign C, this will bring me right to the actual subfield setup. A little quick tip there. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So here, this you probably are not going to touch. We're going to go right over to the advanced constraints is that second tab and there it says default value. So I'm going to go ahead and put the default value of ILL. That is the code for my ILL book. So you, if you don't know your code, you can actually go over to your um, um, item types here. I'm going to open this into a new tab just to verify you will grab that code. So this is the code we would need to use. So there's my ILL code. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that. Um, and then that's it. We're gonna go ahead and hit save. Now let's go ahead and make this because we may want to edit this at some point. If for some reason we decided to create a new item type ILL DVD, and you wanted to do a different one, and for whatever reason, you're renting out your telescope. I wonder if those libraries that circulate telescopes, I allow those. Probably not, right? What do you have? Yeah, probably not. Probably not. That's sad. I want one. Just borrow. Okay, we've done that mark, and now we're going to go over and do the, um, the item, the 952 fields. So I'm gonna go back over, use my breadcrumbs to go back to my ILL framework structure. And one thing you always do notice is you'll notice that it kept the tag in the search box. It, it always does do that. So if you get thrown off, just remember, go back to that search box. Good call because you may want another field. So there's my 952, that's the item level information. Shopping location, collection code, um, Gonna go ahead and hit subfields, barcode, cost, all your items are kept here. And um, we decided, we thought maybe we would like to add something to the material specified field. And we know that that is something when you check it out or check it in, that pops up to alert your CERC staff that this is an ILL material and return it to the, the ILL department or whatever information you wanted to, to set up for that. So I'm going to go over to that subfield three, and it says material specified. So if you never, if you're not sure, it does let you know. Mm -hmm. So say your A, your permanent location, um, your O is your call number. So it does give you a clue of what you, which one you're altering. So I'm going to go ahead and hit three. 
the advanced constraints, and we're going to say return. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so should we give it a test run? So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get right into there. I'm going to go up to my more cataloging. New record. And we're going to use that interlibrary loan. Have some required fields. This is just um, my, my ILL framework itself. We didn't touch this. Let's go. This is a long, this is a long ILL one. We do, we should publish a book, really. Yeah, we should. <laughs> so if I scroll all the way down, 942, there's my ILL item type. So that one is already put in for us. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And now we're going to pop over to our items. And there's my material specified already set up for ILL. So awesome. we're good to go. Yes. And that I, whatever it was in your 942C will populate into the 952Y. So we're, this is perfect. So perfect. if you want to try to do this, please feel free. If not, give, send us a ticket and we'd be happy to help. This is not something people are comfortable with sometimes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, other ones I've seen people, like if you have a donation framework, if you get a lot of donations and you add, add those in, you could add the non-public note, you know, donated and whatever it may be. So this is a great way to kind of speed up the process um, when you're processing items. Yeah. And you actually mentioned another example of putting something in the 500 fields. If you needed to put something in that, you could do that at the bib level. Yeah. I mean, I've seen libraries even add like um, certain things to uh, um, like the 300 fields. Like if you always do something for a photograph and you know there's specific language in there, you could have the default value be added and then you could always add something addition to it. So you don't have to always type it. So it is a great way to just get a template set up and make it easy as possible for your staff. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is great. This is All great. right, Kelly. Have a great week, Jesse. Have a great week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.